Johnson & Johnson making a $2.3 billion takeover bid for the Dutch vaccine maker Crucell. For a look at the move, let's bring in our Bloomberg Pharmaceuticals reporter, Shannon uh, Petipi-Senda. Shannon, good to see you. J&J, uh, &J, uh oh they're betting on this company. Does that mean that we've got to be worried about flu, the flu season? <laughs> well, yeah, this is a flu shot company, and, uh, you know, vaccines have been a very dependable area for drug makers to be into. Right. The flu, it comes around each year very deadly. So, yes, yes. Um, seems flu is a good worse. bet. Yeah. Okay, so why does this make sense for J&J? Well, uh, the J&J CEO has been talking for about the past year about how he wants to do deals, how they're going to, they're willing to pay money for the right deal. Uh, they've got about $16 billion in cash, and we haven't seen much from them, though. And so uh, now this is, this is actually the biggest deal that they've done since 2006 when they bought Pfizer's consumer unit. So now I think we're starting to see J&J come out of the gate and do some uh, large deals. And they haven't done many in pharmaceuticals either. They've done a lot of stuff with devices, a few smaller uh, biotech deals, but this is really kind of the first uh, you know, significant uh, pharmaceutical deal they've done in a while. And are the shareholders going to be happy with this or not? Well, I'm sure there are going to be mixed opinions, but this is about a 58% premium, and according to data on the Bloomberg, the average premium for pharmaceutical and biotech deals over the past year has been about 24%. So they're getting a good deal on this. And also, this company, Crucell, uh, it was uh, going to be purchased by Wyatt over a year ago. Mm -hmm. That deal fell through when Wyeth got bought by Pfizer. Oh, okay, I see. And at that time, uh, Wyeth was offering about $1.3 So this is a billion more than the company was wow. going to be sold for over a year ago. Lucky them. No wonder they're happy and the stock's going right. up. Right. It should, yeah, it shows that the company's built some value and, and they've definitely gotten a better deal now. Okay, now we had you on earlier this week talking about these anti-obesity anti drugs and uh, one from Avid, which mm -hmm. was being considered by the FDA as whether or not it'd be withdrawn or, or, or whatnot. And then there was another one coming out um, that also you know, had some high hopes there by Arena Pharmaceuticals. Mm -hmm. Both of them got set back, right? right? Arena didn't get approved. And then this new this drug by Abbott, there was a split decision on whether or not to pull it, right? Right. Yeah. Well, we had some optimism at the beginning of the week when we talked that maybe we were going to see something new getting to market for uh, obesity. Well, right. that Arena drug, it, it may eventually make it to market, but it, it will probably require some more study, some more research. That's what the panel said. And it really came down to concerns about cancer, that this drug could have a cancer risk, and that was because in lab rats, they develop these tumors. And typically, you know, you can't get something on the market, even if it just causes tumors in, in animals, no sign in humans. So now, at the beginning of the year, we had three drugs that were potential new treatments for obesity. Uh, now we're down to just one. There's a company, Orexogen. They're going to have an FDA hearing uh, later this year. So that's pretty much the last uh, last hope out there for, uh, for those weight loss want. drugs for a while at least. Yeah. Gotta hit the gym then. Right. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Back to diet and exercise oh. for now.